So why wouldn't you get into this tube? Why not climb into this tube? I mean, look at all those layers, if you look at them as layers. Look how easy it is to determine delamination if you look at these as layers. Right? Look how easy it would be to, to determine if you were to look at them as layers. As you look at each one of these striations as layers. Why would you not get inside this tube that's that wide and go to the bottom of the ocean? Why not? Clearly this tube should not be to take compression. It's a, it's a tube. But clearly we know that this tube takes compression. Alright, just want to give you a little sneak peek of... Sneak peek, sneak peeky peek, private room. Making my own pond for now. Another one, another one. Got multiples of these. And what do we have here in the background? Right at the top of the screen, we've got... Stephanie. Stephanie hanging out with me. Alright, so... Here's the overflow here. We'll see how that works out. And again, I got Stephanie in my support team over here as my support team. She's so cute. She just likes, you know, wherever I'm working in the yard, she'll just show up and just start, you know, hanging out with me, but at a distance, and just watch me, observe me. And I can say, hey, Steph, and she'll come over and get closer or do whatever. Um, right now, this might be her, what she feels safe with the, with the machine there. So as you can see her coming to inspect come and inspect what I'm up to and hopefully she understands that's her drinking water had to get her some get her some food there we go okay a little scene stealer if you will the uh, remember I said that you could the critical shear zone tributary zones the rings and what I was gonna do is make a model for you and one of the things I said I would use is things like a bell so this bell, they, they butt to each other. Imagine the rods going through there, these rods, and then you tighten them up. Well, this is what it looks like with just carbon fiber. But imagine that's carbon fiber and or a bell liner that that's, uh, has some stability or profile in it that allows for some compression behind each one of the, the bars you may add. You can add multiple holes, add more bars, more compression in this chamber. Adding compression will help with the deflection. It will stop it from wanting to deflect because you made a strong compressive um, um, bridge for it that it can't deflect. Not make up. That's the nail that's going to be gone. So this is what it would look like roughly. This is your interface ring. This could be a full interface ring, though. It could be partial, or we could have it full, fully down, under compression. you got to worry about buckling it. That is, that is an issue I have, but you would put strain gauges on this. This would tell you what's going on with your vessel, strain gauges on your bars. And you'd be surprised what bars you could probably get away with using. I would be surprised. would not be surprised. Um, you would just have to protect them from the uh, elements or any... Um, Cathodic reaction, the galv galvanic reaction. Uh, it's not being used as a cathode, etc. So, the, or or the any the connections. So this is what it would look like under compression. So now you try to deflect. It can't deflect and push this outwards because it has the compression of this stopping it from going out. That the bar stops it from spreading apart. Now, I did that theoretically with you, and the hyena stole it, that guy with the bicycle thing. I'll out him again. And so you guys are like, don't give him any credit. Yeah, I give him credit for stealing. All right? So this is what I talked about before. And then he quickly did a video on it and taking all the credit from, from it. But using my content, literally using my content, not figuratively, literally. So no slander there. He's a piece of shit. All right, I'm not done with this, though. This model has another rendering, and the other rendering is, well, I don't have it handy. But it's, I still got a lot of work to do, but it's, uh, it's it, I do the interface rings. I cut it. I even cut this. And for Zachary, I made him a model where I 
scored this to try to show what it would be like without an interface ring at all, which in essence is what they have. They could have reinforced the interface ring even like a brick, like this. They didn't just have to bridge it back. It could have been smaller and have the people climb through a smaller section. But that was not to be. That was not to be. All right. So you can see now you can have your interface rings, your how it works, how this could work, stopping it from, from opening at the bottom down here because the rod, the rods would have it compressed. So the, the loading there. Now that's one directional loading, but in reality it's everywhere. So you'd wrap it with a bunch of these rods. Now these rods are protected and everything else. So I've got to take them out of the elements. I'm getting rain, rained on right now. This video is a, uh, well, it's not going to be a full video. It's just a, of Zachary just telling you, still getting it together. I still need my clamps. I need different clamps than what I have. I'm trying to, to get across the difference between a, a, the critical shear zone. This is what's so critical about this whole process is that pressure everywhere, but it's not equal everywhere as far as the reaction, and it's worse at the edges. As you can imagine, if I'm pressing here, equal with equal pressure here, it's nice and continuous through there. That will be the larger interface ring, but it's not solid. But you can imagine that this will be a lot more substantial and resisting my same force than the force I put here, that I put here, and that I put here. And as I get closer to this edge, that's a that's just uh, slipped on. It gets to be a little bit um, uh, deflective. Well, let's see if we can watch it. No, hold on. Let's try here. I'm going to push down. No, I can feel it, but you can't see it. So let's do this. Let's remove the lid just a little bit. Okay. So it will reveal itself. There it is, just a little bit. And I'm moving around a little, little bit there, so let's try this. Yeah, it's, 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 you should see it moving in like it's breathing, like the top part of that metal ring. Watch it. But you might think I'm turning it, so I don't want you to think that. But I wanted to keep, keep equal clamp force everywhere. So let's try this. It's not going to do it. That's why I have the clamps, and the clamps don't even do equal clamp force. Practically off, right? Now let's put it barely on. Right there. It actually has a tendency to climb, and there's a seam that makes it stronger. Now, let's put it near the edge. Now you can see it open and close as a squeeze. There, this, and I'm only squeezing the, t the tube part, but it has a, an effect on the outer connection, as you can see. Totally having it off, we just know where that's going, right? That I can clearly deflect this in all types of ways. Well, that's what happens with this vessel, is that it's only glued, and I've wet this down and let it dry so we can see the the lamination of the layers for people that might not understand the cardboard trick, the tube trick that I was trying to show. It's now delaminated many layers, and yet it's still, I mean, it, it is friggin' strong. Even with that delamination, it still has a lot of strength to it. But I'm not putting 6,000 PSI on it either. The, uh, the, uh, the glue bond is just on each one of these layers though. So the glue is only on the face of this one. As it rings around, it's on the face of that one, face of that one, face of that one. Only on the, the face. Not like a surface like that. So it's like that. Yeah, my hands are dirty, all right? Somebody complimented me on my hands being dirty. Or is it the nails? I'm like, yeah, whatever. All right. So this is that one I did in the, the model in there. I put the ding in there to show you uh, um, permanent deformation. We've already gone over that. 
This will be a bell. I'm working on that along with that one. This is my micro version of it. The critical shear zone, the tube part, the ring part, and even have a, uh, a, a part made up on a um, 3D printer to help you see it differently. <coughs> Not there yet. Not there yet. So over here I, I have a uh, rotor that I routered, right? I use a lathe on it. And I left a bit of a thicker interface ring as opposed to the thin interface ring. And just for concept, how much, if that was built way out here, how much more rigid it would be than if we had just this thin piece as, as, it's, almost, um, as it's almost represented as this thin piece of material. And the deflection, which is, as we know, rips this off. There's an outer one, right? And then there's the inner one. Now, I would start welding and make this up for you right now, but it's uh, the cats are somehow taking over my welding location, which is not here. It's where my welder is in a shed. And I'm not going to disturb them just yet. So uh, this 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 project's been interrupted by cat interruptions. Okay. So now the, the cats are giving me back some of my time. Now they they uh, came out and see what I was up to, and then they so I'm able to do a little more. So I made you an interface ring. Now this is removable. I made it so I can remove it and 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 look at it in different uh, um, different values, if you will. I step this now, use this step in your mind as a different version. It was actually out, I think it's out here, this. It is a slight step down in the in the three, in the uh, one third scale. It's right there, I don't know if it was by accident or not, but nevertheless, there's a step down right here. It's right here, it's not as flat as this. In the one third scale. So this is where we get that squeezing action of the of the exterior of the vessel. It squeezes. When it squeezes, it's out here. It's supported. It's supported out everywhere but through every action except for over here. It's it's anchored with glue, and they have this interface ring to it um, on it, but it's very thin. And when it squeezes, it turns out that this interface ring became structural, was supportive. If you look at the simple look at the uh, the uh, failure I show in the interface ring with the um, one third scale, and you understand what, that it's obviously structural because during the failure, this rips off, all right, and comes folding in. I have a seam here. where I can do that now and show you how it would crisscross using this um, using this version where I can open it up where I can control the band pretty much pretty good pretty pretty good but um, so there's your interface ring that would be your dome you can double double down on this in a lot of ways using a lot of ways this in fact stays because it reminds you that the that the the uh, interface ring is actually now it's a double do double uh, of taking liberty. So as the interface ring, it actually has an outer uh, um, the, the the ring that goes over the outside, but it's a thicker piece here. And then I believe right down the middle, they put another piece of titanium down the middle here, right down the middle, and they 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 welded however they did it to this wall and that wall. And I don't know how it's reinforced down that middle across the bridging, but it doesn't look like it's just this. All right, we just don't see that like that. We see there's a ring. It's a it's a it's a step down, and that's the critical part now because on the step down out here, where they put it over the tube, it's not just like that where you see it. It's actually profiled. It's down, up, and out.
when doing so, they made a shear zone. But that's the outer part, and I'm not worried about the outer part. This is the one that should have been reinforced. And we're talking thick to act like a critical shear zone, like a shear head. It should have been really reinforced and might be, should have been reinforced the entire length of the tube. Okay, let's get to the hyena. Someone sent me a video about some guy, some bicyclist that uh, only does bicycle videos and he's coming over to my channel taking my information. The first grab he did apparently he presents his, uh, he thinks the legs came off and that's what caused the collapse. All right, he got, I didn't put up all the video. Now, guys, I said. I do Trojan horses. I, this is not, you gotta come to the private room if you wanna see the Trojan horse. If you wanna know what the Trojan horse is of this whole thing. I will release it ultimately, but right now I know no one can touch me. And so I talk about the reinforcement that's needed from the front to the back, and I use that in another video. I show that with, uh, a, uh, I said it should be posted post tension bar at multiple locations all the way around. Um, to keep this to keep this from wanting to go uh, the, the stress on land from wanting to go out okay a little scene stealer if you will the uh, remember I said that you could the critical shear zone tributary zones the rings and what I was going to do is make a model for you and one of the things I said I would use is things like a bell so this bell they, they butt to each other. Imagine the rods going through there, these rods, and then you tighten them up. Well, this is what it looks like with just carbon fiber, but imagine that's carbon fiber. And or a bell liner that that's, uh, has some stability or profile in it that allows for some compression behind each one of the, the bars you may add. You can add multiple holes, add more bars, more compression in this chamber, adding compression will help with the deflection. It will stop it from wanting to deflect because you re made a strong compressive um, um, bridge for it that it can't deflect. Not make up. That's the nail that's going to be gone. So, this is what it would look like roughly. This is your interface ring. This could be a full interface ring though. It could be partial or we could have it full, fully down under compression you got to worry about buckling it that isn't that is an issue i have but you would put strain gauges on this this would tell you what's going on with your vessel strain gauges on your bars and you'd be surprised what bars you could probably get away with using i would be surprised would not be surprised um you would just have to protect them from the uh, elements or any um cathodic reaction the galvanic reaction, uh, it's not being used as a cathode, etc. So, the, or, or the, any of the connections. So this is what it would look like under compression. So now you try to deflect. It can't deflect and push this outwards because it has the compression of this stopping it from going out. That the bar stops it from spreading apart. Now I did that theoretically with you and the hyena stole it, that guy with the bicycle thing, I'll out him again. And so you guys are like, don't give me any credit. Yeah, I give him credit for stealing. All right? So this is what I talked about before. And then he quickly did a video on it and taking all the credit from, from it. But using my content, literally using my content, not figuratively, literally. So no slander there. He's a piece of shit. All right, I'm not done with this, though. This model has another rendering. And the other rendering is, well, I don't have it handy. But it's, I still got a lot of work. To do, but it's uh, it's it, I do the interface rings. I cut it. I even cut this. And for Zachary, I made him a model where I scored this to try to show what it would be like without an interface ring at all. Which, in essence, is what they have. They could have reinforced the interface ring even like a brick, like this. They didn't just have to bridge it back. It could have been smaller and have the people climb through a smaller section. But that was not to be. That was not to be. All right, so you can see now you can have your interface rings, your how it works, how this could work. 
stopping it from from opening at the bottom down here because the rod the rods would have it compressed so the, the loading there now that's one directional loading but in reality it's everywhere so you'd wrap it with a bunch of these rods now these rods are protected and everything else so I've got to take them out of the elements I'm getting rain rained on right now now they did at one point have a strong back on a, a band across here across the top of it it was there it's not always there it's, it's, I see it come I see it go all right in different in different images so it was there but that's only or oriented that way when it gets in the water that orientation changes and that that's not a good thing so you would need these bands all the way around all right now the back end of it so then he has it the back end he doesn't on his my chosen horse he has the back end coming off and I don't want to give it away because he's a, he's a nasty hyena some bicyclist clown hat just watch my video right now literally using my content literally using it inside his videos and it's just hyena nasty move that uh it's plagiarism, you know, we, we only got, you know, somebody that really plagiarizes is, is uh, who admits to plagiarism and becomes president. All right, so I guess plagiarism is okay. Um, so he's a, the guy, you're, you're a plagiarist POS, right? You know, you're, you're disgusting. You are disgusting. All right, so he has it coming off there now, and that's my, and part of my, um, well, well, the plagiarists are nasty. That's why I ultimately... I'd like to get down to only doing videos and just put them in a private room. And But the problem is a lot of you donators are donating out here, but you're not part of a private room. So I can't deprive you either. So you, uh, you just keep that in mind that um, your donations keep the videos public also. Um, and here we go. So this would be look like that. And this creates a critical shear zone, a, a perforation with their detail, the way they did it. I'll get further into that. Um, I'll literally crimp and roll this and put a crimp and roll into it, a kink into it. That will marry out here. But I just wanted to give you a preview of what's being built. And once you see it here on this end, the detail on the other end is not quite um, captured that easily. But it just may be, that might be the end that we're looking at, the, the end that they installed in the video we see with, it, with, it, with the share, Ocean Gate shares. It just might be the aft end that they're installing. Ah, what do you think? In that case, I'll be showing you the exact mm, replication of it. It's not scaled, but it's the replica, you know, so, but it's not scaled. It's concept. So now let me get you get you this, and so shout out to my my uh, my uh, cat lovers, my people that donate via sending sending um, Amazon packages for the cats now. Um, that, that's just outstanding. And uh, this video is uh, Zachary request. And Zachary, no, don't don't. <laughs> I'm doing a video for you. You don't have to give a dime here. You don't have to give any money. I'm doing it. One, I'm doing this for you. So I appreciate your support, and I'm not saying, you know, don't give ever again, but I'm saying this was not intended to, uh, to, to gain a dollar from you. Um, so I just want you know, giving you, hey, you, I, I, I state that my donors are allowed to ask questions like that, and, I'm, and I may do a video reply. In this case, you get the video reply, and the rest of the people get to enjoy your question. But if this squeeze is everywhere, which it talks, which I talk about in the video tomorrow, I'm going to maybe slip this in early, if, or this will be after the fact. But it squeezes, it comes down, it breaks bond here. Squeezing, it rips this. This is in the other video. This is in the content. All right, this is inside the content of the, uh, of the electrical engineer who states that he did so much work there. Where he states it shrinks by millimeters. Okay, so now, get taken liberty, I just used a strap to hold this on temporarily while I try to explain it to you again. So let's look at it, get a little closer, and think about the rings. As you can see them like this. This would be the glued area. And I don't care if it's got this step down or not. But the glued area, and here's your outer ring, which upon pressure being loaded, yeah, there's some pressure on the outer ring. Can fluid get behind here and then across the face of this and 
start delaminating it. Well, it can some of it can get behind there and start doing some damage, but the more the the the, the damage shows in the sample as the interface ring not being able to hold the end of the tube as it compresses. The end of the tube is where the failure is, and that's it, from the tributary area into the critical shear zone area, which is this. This is the support for the for the uh, tube. So let's see if you guys can see it this way and think of it that way. Does that help you visualize it? Tell me what you think that uh, that you're missing here, and I'll improve. I'll improve this as we go. Um, and I, I like it better than my nylon bushing that I was doing, this version of it with the, with the brakes. And, wow, I can share some stuff with you with that. A master machinist, um, not me, um, I shared some information about uh, the, the brake cutting. And, uh, I mean, he's a master machinist. He's, you know, got like, I don't know, so is it, what is it, about 50 years of machining under his belt? Only, only thing he's ever done. Navy to civilian, and the uh, I talked to him about the the uh, titanium and what happens with the metal and things like that. And yes, yeah, he agreed. He said that uh, yeah, you can get some hard spots in here that just because of heat, it makes this just a section can become very hard, meaning um, hardened because of the heat. And then you have a part that's not hardened. You know that when you're tooling. And you go to cutting, 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 all of a sudden it, it starts pushing back at you and it's a little bit difficult to tool that. Same material going across. And it's interesting, you know, that, that, that. I've run into that before and that's, that's an old, um, an old thing, educational thing that I learned a long time ago from them. And that is your tool can get hardened. So hardened metal can get soft and soft metal can get hardened. You know, meaning this is soft, but it can, well, it's aluminum. Uh, metal can become hardened by, by heat. And heat can take a hardened metal and make it brittle. Isn't that amazing? But it's also an issue with cutting. So I, I hope this is, again, helpful to help you see that. that any, so you look at my finger, right, my hand, and pretend like it's the vessel. You can see what happens if it tries to deflect down. The pressure is pushing downwards. But it's more like that in the middle because it's everywhere. And this is holding here. And why? that's why I choose it like that away from here because they put a bond here, a grip is here. So it's it's gripped. And as it's trying to push down, this is holding, but the rest is deflecting. So this the basically the hull shouldn't have deflected. They should have made it so the hull would not deflect. I know some people like the idea of deflection, give and all that, or your fracture or the wise. Well you're gonna compensate for it if you're gonna give. It better be within the range where it stays plastic where everything stays plastic, including the grip here. This, you're breaking the grip here with the glue. There's no way you can recapture it. It's not re self-healing glue, you know, that's going to re-grab itself. Now, it recapture itself. Most of that damage is done on land. Not in the water, but a lot of damage is done in the water also. And that's, uh, all right, so the hyena's out there. The bicyclist guy, hyena. I have to out them, guys, because... If you don't out the people that are plagiarizing you, you, you the world's going to go to shit. Remember the, just now the, the, the young student, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, junior, junior, the uh, freshman in college, he outed the professor, the uh, university professor, and he had, he had resigned. As you can see, if you just Google it, plagiarism is very strong. It's what the people do nowadays is plagiarize instead of uh, doing the work. You've got to out these plagiarists, the people that just steal steal stuff. Now, someone said, maybe the ra raccoons do that. He's from England. I'm like, Wolf. Wolf's their name. No, Wolf, uh, raccoons, uh, they'll run away. Whereas a plagiarist, a hyena, will, try, will, take your, will take your work and pass it off as, their, as a good kill for them. That they're, they're hunting. Plagiarism is done by people who copying you know, after you without giving credit and also without permission. And or not fair use in the United States with fair use laws, and um, or, or 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 you know, and that's the size of that. All right, so there there's that one. Of course, we know that uh, Tool Time copies behind my work all the time, and his motivation is obviously money, because he gets uh, what about five thousand dollars per million views, and this guy just nailing the views, million views. 
And so that incentivizes him to do his uh, snatching of other people's work and publishing it um, under limited, under, uh, under, under, uh, what I, what I state is that for the, like, applied physics lab, they should get hold of, uh, YouTube and take the money from, uh, from his channel for that video. That video's probably made $5,500 already. The last one where he shows applied physics lab, the way he's using it doesn't look like fair use at all. Not fair use at all. It's one-to-one, -one and it's too far, too much material, and... He's using it for monetary gain, not for educational purposes, which my channel is educational purposes. His channel is all about selling stuff, tools, etc. So it is a, um, a uh, everyone, no one would, I don't think anyone would argue that it's, uh, besides himself maybe, that it's uh, maybe, that his channel is not for profit. All right, so, so apply physics lab. If you got anything to do with this and look at it, look at that video, ask YouTube for the money, and you'll take every dollar from them. You gotta take from these plagiarists and these people who take from you, you gotta take it back. You gotta stand up, guys. I know it may, you may be annoyed by me bringing it up. A couple of people said, oh, don't worry about them. Yeah, well, you're not the one that's uh, getting your uh, information plagiarized. If you wanna know what that's like, well, start presenting information, publishing it, and then have me come behind you. And publish your same information. Not just publish it just straight like it's like I found it. Like it's my data. And see what, see how that makes you feel. So whatever you come up with, pretend like I'm behind you going, repeating whatever you just said, but I'm repeating it behind you like a little troll. And then see how funny you think it is then. See how, see how, um, um, how nice, I'm showing you this at the same time. See how nice you think, how nice you'll be. Let's see your claws come out. All right. Hopefully you enjoy this. I still have more to go. I'm going to add that, add the the uh, critical uh, critical shear zone to this. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, I'm going to make a critical shear zone tributary area, and we're going to see this in action again. We're going to run at this again. I care about this side. I don't care about this porthole. All right. I don't care about the porthole. I don't care about it. I don't believe that the um, the way we have this failure, well, I don't want to give it away, but the way we have this failure, well, I've given it away numerous times. You guys aren't paying attention. A couple people aren't, you're not paying attention. I'll go at it again, but right now we're going to work with this. And then when I get to the summation video, which is probably only, it's been pretty short from here, unless I get more data, it's pretty short. We're talking next week, maybe, and I'll give you your, your summation video with your, with your model. But this is the rough model to get you warmed up. You know, it's just like a classroom. You don't get, you don't just jump to the end going, this is how you do this, that's it, but walk away. No, you got to learn the material behaviors, etc. And then we get to your, uh, your, your summation that you will even understand to be able to explain to someone yourself. Okay. Take care. And thank you, everyone who sent me uh, gifts just now and, and donating to the channel. I do see it on, I do see it on PayPal. And anybody who gives to the cats, I see a little comment saying give to the cats or give 50-50. I see that. And when I see the cat thing, give to the cats, I literally get up uh, whatever money it is. And don't worry about PayPal, what they deducted from there. I don't deduct. I, I give it the full amount. So if you gave 20 bucks, $20 goes into a paper clip. goes 100% to the uh, kitties. And not to Georgia Bruce. Um, to the four, now there's four of them outside. There's Lee Lee. Nancy, Stephanie, and the little kitten. And um, Bruce has to eat wet food, but it's not, not your wet food. It's, uh, you know, he's got his own little special supply. And he fights me eating it. Also, he loves chicken. He, he goes crazy for raw chicken. What else can I say? Um, so I do see your donations. Thank you. And um, I do respect where you want the money to go. Instantly doing it 100%. Don't worry about PayPal's deductions. It's like you just gave 100%. I eat the, that tax money, whatever the hell it is, on my side. And remember that if I piss you off and you donate it up until the end of the tax season, which would be like March, actually, um, you can uh, ask for a refund. I'll give you 100% of your money back if I piss you off with uh, some of my comments, such as something saying something like uh, plagiarism and, and our president's a plagiarist, admitted, admitted plagiarist. So if that offends you, then, and you gave me money, then I'll give it back to you. 
I don't want you guys to forget there's four bottles here. As you can note, they're steel and they're also rusted at the heads. Remember that the steel is probably tested in tension, not in compression, and that's what more than likely this saw. Okay, bon bonus part of the video. Bonus part of the video. Let me see if I turn the mic up a bit. And that didn't work. Maybe it's working anyway. The sub, it looks like, uses this roller type system, a roller deck. It rolls out the weights from the center. Alrighty, let's go ahead and give you a the bonus part of the video, but it will only be clue, but not... It will be pretty good, but it's enough for you to say, oh, I think I know. All right, so what is it? I'll do a triangle here. Pay attention. Triangle. What is he doing with the triangle? You know how I love my my Columbo moves. Triangle. What's so important about this? That one I want to go further up. All right, this represents the tight Titan, the top of the Titan. Uh, color. Color, 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 red. Okay, so, well, that represents the Titan now. Oh, fuck. Uh, actually, that works. All right, so the, the the Titan, what's the first thing he would have done? Think about it. What's the first thing he would have done? Release the weights. All right? He would have released these weights. He would have tried to bail on the weights. Let's pretend like this is the ocean. He's at one hour and 30 minutes, one hour and 45 minutes. He's slowly ascending back up. But he releases weights. Where would the weights be? So let's just use this as W for weights. Okay, so text it out. And let's do weights. So you can call them pipe, right? All right, so pipe is here. He just dumps them all. All right, right right there. The pipe pretty much not like a... He's going to go straight down. All right, not not too much off center. But now we have the... The, the the bow of t the Titanic, so that was the Titanic. So, Titanic. No, I didn't, uh, um, ah, shit. So, um, the, uh, no capitals, forget it. So, there's your bow, your Titanic, and right about here, 200 meters, which is what, uh, 400 plus feet? So, 500 feet? All right, so, oops, 200 meters, so 500 feet to 1,600 feet is our debris field. All right, debris field is 1,600 feet over here. And this is based off of the bow. All right, so we got 200 meters, which I'm just going to round up to 500 feet. All right, and, and, and so we got 1,100 feet. 1,100 feet. I don't know why I said 900 feet before. 400 meters? Is, is a, a, Did I screw up? Um, it's like 956. Yeah, I think I screwed up. Let's call that a 6. Let's call it a 6 for good measure. 600 feet. Okay, 600 feet. And it's like 900 feet between the two of them. Okay, so you've got your 900 feet. Nine zero zero feet. Your spread, and let's change the colors for that. To well, how's that looking? Nope. And we'll go with the red. All right. So nine hundred nine hundred feet is our spread, and the. So how do you get there? Here, let's let's use this as a center line. As you rise up. Now, I did the Titanic. The Titanic is 2,000 feet apart. 2,000 feet apart if you research and find out the, the Titanic's front to back, front to aft. And and I do the inclination and all that, and it only comes to two, about 2, 3 degrees. That's all it is, really, the inclination of, of them. And you would get that at, at 12,500 feet, 3 degrees, about 3 degrees, will get you a 2,000 foot spread. So that's all they needed to, to go to make the difference. See, this is like a 45. All they needed was to get that 2,000 feet was just, here's, here's a 90, just three degrees, just that little bit there. But you go up 1,250 feet and you get a spread of 2,000 feet. So I do the same thing with the Titanic. 
and it comes back to the Titan, of course, the same thing because, well, it's uh, the surface. But it, it's this thing implodes. So if it implodes, that means that it can't be at the surface. It didn't just get to the surface and all of a sudden just pop like a balloon. But but we can get to, oh, great. Uh, Zachary and I played around with some numbers. And we, we want to say it, it made it to 4,000 PSI before imploding. Um, looking at that, that's around 9,514 feet. Okay, let's do that. So we get them coming back. We get them at 9,114 feet. And that's a rough estimate. You know, where you guys can jump in your own numbers if you like, if you want to play along with this. We get this. And when I do that, when we do that, and and I get the spread to get the spread of 900 feet, the tail first has to come off, all right? And then to get the spread, I have this level, all right? Th this, not, this doesn't have to be level, but if, to get that, it doesn't take much. Again, it's back to, uh, let me see if I send them the image. Uh, it's back to, um, yeah, 9,500 feet, um, 460 feet apart. I put that as a center line, incidentally, which uh, I'm, I'm taking liberty with that, saying it's a center line. So that gives us 900 feet. 460 gives us like 920 feet, but... You, who gives about some pen? Don't worry about the pennies. So that gives me a inclination of 2.7 degrees, 77 seven degrees, from from this point down to touchdown. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I, I um, I screwed the pooch on that. Um, I have that at 9,000 feet. Give me one second as we talk. As we talk, I'll have to change your, your change it right now. So let me do that real quickly. Um, I have a graph I use. Okay, good. All right, so it's actually 12,500 feet, so it's 3,000 feet. So there's 3,000 feet on this axis, right? And the spread is still going to be the, um, let's see, let's 900 feet apart, let's do 450, 450. And, uh, well, I do get 8.5, 8.52 degrees off of here to get the spread of 950 feet. That's with the floor being at 12,500, my elevated height being 3,000 feet, 450 feet apart. That's it flat, though. But here's a kicker. Our inclination of the sub could be like this. When it has a trajectory, a trajectory down towards here and then this goes off it's a whole nother it's a whole nother game in axis and what you have to remember is that there's 6500 psi out here there is 6500 psi lurking a 57 5500 it's different psi's that goes down let's say it's uh out here it's lurking it it's a uh, 4000 psi i think we, we we roughly came at right the uh 4000 bear with me um, 4,118. So we're at 4,000, yeah, 4,118 PSI. This is roughly, you can change it around if you want to do harder math on this. Um, then sure, do harder math and, and we won't hate you on it. We'll welcome the, uh, someone else playing around with the math. And of course that includes, um, Dr. Ng Ronald. And yeah, so the research shows that it's Dr. Ng, Doctor of Engineering, Ronald. Um, yep, that that's the way they do it there. So uh, uh I stand corrected. That's why you see me see it call him Dr. Ng now. I mean it's wrong, but I, I should say Ronald, but yeah, because I'm taking it away, I'm just saying Doctor of Engineering and you guys should or should know I mean Ronald, but I'm, I have to adding Ronald shows the location of the person. All right, so look, here's 4,800 PSI up here somewhere. And then it, it increases as it goes down. But you're throwing, you're throwing this damn cone at it. You're throwing it. You're throwing the dome at it, right? You're throwing a dome that might flip and toss and everything to get over to here. It's just... The force, it's got to go through all this PSI. And if you guys ever look up shooting a bullet into water, 
it will absorb that energy pretty damn fast. With that said, the spread of the Titanic is 2,000 feet. It broke up at the surface, but yet it still managed to dive. That front of the vessel, I believe, is more the diving force the, 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 it gave the inclination more so than the ASN. The ASN having the, the propellers, the engine room, etc. I think it has, it's more in line of where the, where the true breakup happened. And it probably, you know, do, 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 went down like that. Well, that's the front end, isn't it? So the ass ends over here then. And it's got the propellers, etc. It would be nice to see what that looks like. I didn't dive into that much. But the front of the Titanic, as they know, as you know, it's dug into the sand a bit. Which brings us to, once we see photographs, once they release them, if they do, meteor was my trick. I want you to think of a meteor and how if a meteor comes on an angle into the planet, um, would it just create a crater like this? Or would it create a snowballing effect? And I know that some people were like, hey, you know what? It doesn't drag across. The, the, it comes at us at a, a square angle. But, you know, just, just, just give me some liberty and realize that this is on, if this is on an inclination, you will also have an impact zone that will show that inclination, this incline. For example, the pipes will just create a crater with an outward force like that if they would just go straight down, right? As long as they weren't thrown away during an impact, it would just be like that. That would be your pipes. Your, it'd be pretty easy to look at. And then our tail cone, our, our, our ass end of the vessel, same thing. If it just fell down, it would have had an impact. If they release the images, the, the videos, then we'll be able to look at it and go, okay, look, this looks like this. This one rear end looks like that. Oh, but look, the front cone, if you will, the front nose cone um, has a bit of a, a it was, it's a bit of a slope like this. So, oh, this, this now, I can reverse the inclination now of it. See it? So if this is the front snow, the cone, if we knew that this is what it looked like, we'd be able to do this. As the, as the, put that down as the floor. Let me delete this out of the way. We'd be able to put that down at the floor. And we be, would be able to tell, well, that inclination, but how it's sort of inclined. But remember, it might have flipped and tossed, and who knows, it could have impacted and, 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 and landed like this. So I was going to do a model and play with some sand with you and show this to you. But instead, I'm just letting you visualize it this way. Remember, the pipes would be critical because of the way they land. I'm going to end the video with this. I could give you more. I have a lot more on this the angle, the, the Titan, the other vessels that go down, like such as the uh, the um, um, the vessels that go down, the other uh, vessels that get sunk by the military, by the per people to make artificial reefs. The short answer is the ASN always seems to go first, and once it goes first, the ship wants to turn straight up and dive down, and then when it hits. It wants to then lay down like it was at the top of the water again. It just wants to lay down that direction. It's just the buoyancy of the vessel, I believe, going through there. And then when it writes itself, it writes itself laying down. It, it just it, they, I haven't found one yet that where it's turned, where it went down deep enough and flipped the other way. So it, it seems to find a way. Um, the and it turns up. I mean, it turns up drastically, ninety degrees to. Uh, to um, 90 degrees to oh so look there's a Titanic survivors so I wanted to see what they said about cracking um, and about cracking come back for breakfast etc but going to history uh, some of this is not my history going to history I want to show you let me move this over so you can see more of it the history so we, you, you see that this is the rat, the boats, this, <laughs> they threw those over. There's different versions that I looked at. Sinking, you see how that one sinks? How it floods and lands. And then there's this one, the guy tried to say it was currents, but in reality, they, this was so shallow, the back end hit the bottom. And you got some whiplash effect from the uh, rebound effect from the water coming back that's, that's flowing into the water, to the beach, and then flowing back out. And I can see a little bit of a wave in the, in the vessel. On the military version, this was interesting because they go, they, oh, no, 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 the other version is more interesting. 
they attack the shit out of this, right? They go, even go back down on it before it goes under. And when it goes under, um, it turns this, this, this 90 degree. There it is going, right? And at some point, it's going to flip it. And if it's still so strong, it doesn't fracture it. It stands it up, as you see there. It stands it up 90 degrees as it dives. Whereas the Titanic, we can now learn that through extrapolation, it was not as strong as a military hull vessel because it fractured. All right, then one more is this uh, Cousteau guy. He goes down on it. Is this him now? Um, well, I don't know where it is. Um, that's weird. It should be in my history. And the Cousteau guy, they go down with the, with the cameras on. And um, he was on top of the deck as it went down. It was, obviously, it was only like 140 feet or something. All right, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, you can do your own research and try to do extrapolations. Please don't be so definitive when you when you talk to me on here. Or I'll, I'm just going to get angry. And you're going to get me angry and I'm going to tell you off and I'm going to cry because I told you off. All right, just don't be so definitive. It's, it's just this is not... We need to know the angle. We need, to need more evidence. But you have to realize the water outside of here, that pressure is maybe around 4,000 psi when it when it collapsed, when it imploded. The reason why we pick on that 4,000 psi, Zachary and I, because we know that through testing, one of the testing, hint, one of the testing shows that failures at 4,000 psi. Now, I've always told you guys that he took it to the university of, I mean, the, uh, the uh, testing at, at the um, Maryland's facility. And I have images to prove that. But what, what I'll say is there is no tail. He did not have the tail on it at the time. And it was fresh. It was a fresh glue up. It was fresh epoxy and everything. So it was going to behave differently. This was always going to implode. This was never going. I'm sorry. It was always going to fail. And it was always going to implode if he kept taking it down. 